Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 3rd of May. Third phase of COVID vaccination for people above 18 begins in Indian capital. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan protest against discrimination in Pakistan's upliftment schemes. And US will disrupt any threat from Afghanistan, says President Biden. And now for all the details. As India's overall number of coronavirus cases is just shy of 20 million, capital New Delhi started mass vaccination drive for all adults on Monday. India had started countrywide inoculation drive, the third and largest phase to inoculate people in 18 to 45 age group on Saturday. However, most states and federal territories, including the national capital, could not begin the drive immediately because of a shortage of vaccines. A total of 368,147 new COVID-19 cases were reported in India in the past 24 hours, taking the total tally to over 19.9 million, according to the Health Ministry on Monday. This marked the 12th straight day that the daily new cases surpassed 300,000. In capital New Delhi, one of the most affected places in the country, over 20,000 new cases and 407 deaths were reported on Sunday. Delhi has been put under a third successive week-long lockdown till May 10. On Monday, the Indian capital started a mass vaccination drive for all adults while turning schools into vaccination centres. India had started the third phase of the countrywide inoculation drive on Saturday. However, most states and federal territories, including national capital, could not begin the drive immediately because of a shortage of vaccines. Only one private hospital in Delhi was conducting vaccination from Saturday onwards. Puri Delhi mein is waqt aaj 301 centers par vaccination ka program shuru hua hai 18 saal se 45 saal ke beech ke logon ke liye aur kyunki aaj pehla din hai hum isko aur aage badhayenge hamara target hai ki har school mein is tarah se kam se kam 10 centers ho aur abhi isko dheere dheere karke hum Despite being the world's biggest producer of vaccines, India does not have enough for itself. Only about 9% of the population has had a dose. Meanwhile, the Indian capital, New Delhi, got its first oxygen plant operational on Monday at the Commonwealth Games Village that has been turned into a COVID-19 care centre. Delhi, like other Indian cities, has been grappling with the shortage of medical oxygen supply and hospitals fell to capacity over the past two weeks amid the unprecedented surge of coronavirus. International aid has been pouring into India in response to the crisis. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's coronavirus cases tally surged past 834,140 on Monday with 18,149 deaths reported so far. Pakistan's planning minister Asad Umar has said the need for caution remains high and the next few weeks are critical for the country. Pakistan's coronavirus tally climbed to 834,146 on Monday after 4,213 people tested positive for the virus. While 79 new fatalities were reported in the last 24 hours, taking the death toll due to the pandemic to 18,149. The South Asian nation on Monday expanded its vaccination drive to citizens aged 40 to 49 a few days after allowing walk-ins for residents aged 50 and older. This came after health officials in Sindh province last Friday said that they have detected two coronavirus variants first identified in Brazil and South Africa at a hospital in Karachi, Pakistan's largest city. 
Pakistan's planning minister, Asad Umar, in a tweet late on Sunday said, the need for caution remains high. For Pakistan, the next few weeks are critical. Officials are worried the country's healthcare system, already under strain, could reach breaking point if more contentious variants of the virus begin to spread. The government has planned stricter restrictions on movement and gathering in public ahead of the upcoming Eid holiday. Moving on, locals and political activists in Gilgit, Baltistan had a massive demonstration recently over alleged discrimination in the multi-billion rupees package announced by Pakistan for the illegally occupied region. They claimed that no single project had been announced in the package for Giza district, which was injustice with the locals. Locals and political activists in Gilgit Baltistan's Giza district held a massive demonstration recently against what they alleged discrimination against the people in the illegally occupied region in the multi billion rupees package announced by Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan. The protesters raised slogans against Chief Minister Khalid Khurshid Khan and claimed that no single project had been announced in the package for the district, which was injustice with the people. They warned they would start an agitation campaign after Eid to demand their rights. Uh, the protesters said the unfair distribution of development projects was harming unity and harmony in the region. They blamed the people in the illegally occupied region have been facing discrimination for decades at the hands of successive stooge governments which only operate at the behest of Islamabad. In news from Afghanistan. U.S. President Joe Biden has said that as Washington draws down its troops from Afghanistan, the United States will remain vigilant about the threat from terrorist groups that have metastasized around the world and will continue to monitor and disrupt any threat that emerges from Afghanistan. The remarks were made in a statement on 10th anniversary of raid that killed Osama bin Laden. The U.S. President Joe Biden, in a statement on 10th anniversary of the raid that killed Osama bin Laden, said that the United States will remain vigilant about the threat from terrorist groups that have metastasized around the world. Biden, in a statement, said, as we bring to an end America's longest war and draw down the last of our troops from Afghanistan, Al-Qaeda is greatly degraded there. But the United States will remain vigilant about the threat from terrorist groups that have metastasized around the world. We will continue to monitor and disrupt any threat to us that emerges from Afghanistan. The Afghan government says that the roots of the Al-Qaeda network are still alive in Afghanistan and the group still poses a threat to the country and the world and is collaborating with the Taliban. But the Taliban has rejected any type of relations with Al-Qaeda. The US presence in Afghanistan over the last 20 years was due to the existence of Al-Qaeda. Biden last month, while announcing troops withdrawal from Afghanistan starting May 1, said the U.S. has achieved its objectives in Afghanistan war. More news from Afghanistan. A searing blaze that raced through fuel tankers in the Afghan capital of Kabul killed at least nine people and injured 14 others over the weekend. The tankers were parked in northern Kabul outside of the city and burst into flames late on Saturday, according to the Ministry of Interior. Gasoline tanker trucks burst into flames in Afghan capital Kabul overnight, killing at least nine people and starting large fires that caused power cuts to some parts of the city, local media reports said on Sunday. The tankers were parked in northern Kabul outside of the city and burst into flames late on Saturday, according to the Ministry of Interior. Fourteen people were injured. The cause of ignition was not immediately known, but the fires come as the city remains on high alert with officials bracing for attacks from the insurgent Taliban over the continued presence of foreign troops in the country. The 
ده شب خدا اونجا صبح کردیم صبح کی که پس طرف خانه خدا اومدیم که دیدیم که شیشه های مکمل میده شده شده که کنای مو پایان افتید Meanwhile some lawmakers on Sunday raised questions over the incident that mainly targeted fuel imports saying there are some hands behind such incidents that seek to harm the country's economy The Taliban have said US President Joe Biden's announcement last month that American troops would leave by September 11 violates a 2020 agreement under the Trump administration that offered a May 1 withdrawal deadline. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. A group of volunteers in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka dished up free Ramadan meals for the poor on Sunday amid an extended lockdown aimed at curbing coronavirus spread. The lockdown which began on April 5 has particularly impacted those below poverty line. A group of volunteers in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka dished up free Ramadan meals for the poor on Sunday amid an extended lockdown aimed at curbing the spread of the coronavirus. Dhaka based charity Mehman Khana or Food for Guests has been cooking for free meals since March of last year during the country's first coronavirus lockdown. According to the volunteers despite funding problems they had managed to arrange food for around 1000 people on a daily basis Dozens of people could be seen queuing by midday to pick up iftar the meal that Muslims eat after sundown to break their fast during Ramadan Corona jonno jokhon lockdown holo tokhon amra shuru korechi amader etar funding eshe hocche poribarer atyoshojone je jakater taka nijeder sonchito taka ota theke puro bochor te amra chaliye jawar chesta korechi jara din mujur chilo riksha chalay pothe thake oshob manush jader ekebari kormohin hoye porechilo ami corona bitar amar chakri nai ekhon ami ektarik jonno ekhane ashi amar kono kaj nai chakri shesh Bangladesh's current lockdown which was triggered by rising covid 19 cases started on April 5 and was recently extended to May 5. Bangladesh reported 1,359 new COVID-19 cases and 69 coronavirus-related deaths on Sunday. South Asia is fast becoming the new global epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic. India is reporting a new record rise in daily COVID-19 cases in recent weeks in the middle of a deadly second wave that has crippled its healthcare system. Expressing solidarity with India, Buddhist monks in Sri Lanka over the weekend prayed for the improvement of the COVID-19 crisis in India. Buddhist monks in Sri Lanka on Saturday prayed for the improvement of the COVID-19 crisis in India. Monks at the historic Kelaniya Buddhist Temple began chanting the Holy Ratna Sutra verse which will continue for one week. India's total case load is just shy of 20 million while deaths from COVID-19 rose by 3417. The sutra was first preached by Buddha more than 2600 years ago when a pandemic had devastated the ancient Indian kingdom of Vasala. Since then the sutra is recited during times of hardship believing the practice would eradicate the pandemic our neighbor the indian people suffer a lot because of this covid uh, 19 actually as a religious people and also Uh, especially the buddhist monks and buddhist people in this country want to share the our sympathy with the people of india meanwhile sri lanka on sunday imposed travel restrictions on the number of air passengers arriving in the country for two weeks due to the covid-19 pandemic this limitation will be effective from monday for 14 days Sri Lanka for the seventh consecutive day set an all-time high for coronavirus cases on Sunday, reporting over 1,800 individuals confirmed positive for COVID-19 in the last 24 hours, taking the total to 111,753 cases. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/AsiaNewsline. and follow us on twitter at asia newsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time tomorrow good night 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन